Let's talk about the latest episode of Ready to Love. It starts off with Jay and Winter sitting down and talking. She asks him straight up, so where are you at? Where's your head at? And he admits to her that Joy is his number one. Then he asks her how she feels about that. And she says that she's not used to being number two. Winter, I like you, but you don't get to be 40 years old and unmarried and not in a relationship and not have known what the feeling is like to be number two. We've all been there before. And it's not to say that you're not a good woman, a pretty woman, or all these other things, but just you're not for everybody. And there has to have been a situation in your life where somebody chose somebody else over you. And if I remember correctly, I think you were the one who said that you had been married and then he cheated on you three weeks after the honeymoon or something like that. So it just strikes me as odd that you feel that this is a weird place for you. We've all been number two. We've all been number three. Like it just happens. Not everybody's going to be want you the same way you want them. And it's not a bad thing, but for her to take so much, to feel a way about it, to say something to me about her and how she either views herself or views this whole process. But we'll get more into that later because um, it kind of plays out when she and Jay have their one-on-one -on -one date. So the guys get pulled into Tommy's tavern and he gives them an assignment. And the assignment is that they have to spend time with the person who they may not, who's not their number one, somebody who they not may not have been spending a lot of time with and get to know that person better and to be vulnerable. So Tommy sets up dates for all of them and he sets up really nice dates. I think the guys are the ones who determine what the date's going to look like but he provides questions for them to ask each other to, to unveil these, um, you know, these, these other layers and figure out who these people are and what they're actually dealing with. And I like that because I don't think that happened in season one and season two. And this is a good way. And there were really good questions, like really solid questions that you can't kind of duck and dive out of that will give you some insight into the person that you are dating. But before they go on their one-on-ones, Jay goes to Joy and he tells her, hey, listen, we've been given an assignment and the assignment is I have to go and ha hang out with the person who I need to know better. And so I just want you to know that this is what's going on. And I thought that was really cool. Now, I have not always been a Jay fan. I liked him in the very beginning and then towards the middle, I felt like he was a little bit of a hype man and he just was always saying the right things but it's very clear that he's into joy. And I like the fact that he goes to her and he tells her, this is what we've been tasked to do. So if you see me off, you know, with another woman, this is why. And it just goes to show how much he's into her and that he really wants her to understand that she's his number one and that he's only doing this because this is part of the requirement of this process. So all the guys, set up a date to speak to that person who's probably their number two. And we see Rashid meet up with Alex. The type of conversation they had is one that she probably never could have had with Brian. So Brian was pretty, it's, he seemed immature and that's why he was kicked off last week. And I'm, it makes me feel away for Alex because I think Alex is a good woman. She's in this for real. And only because she had given so much energy to Brian in the beginning is that she didn't get the opportunity to meet other men. So now with her linking up with Rashid, it seems a little, you know, day, day late, dollar short. Um, and I don't know that Rashid can, has the opportunity to get invested in her as much as he could be because it's just so late in the process. And coupled with that is that I don't know that Adriana is the one for him. Adriana is his number one. He really likes her. 
you remember that they met before this whole show that they had went on a date and then she ended up ghosting him and they said later that it was because she was just coming out of a relationship and he was just coming out of a marriage but I like Adriana I do think she has a great spirit and energy to her but I don't know that I like her for Rashid and it's not and the only reason is because of the age difference. He's, I want to say in his late 40s. She's in her early 30s. He's been married. He has a kid. Something about her just doesn't seem equipped for all of that. And I feel that Rashid is going to end up being disappointed by her. So I would have liked to have seen him give an opportunity to other women. You know, last week, Simone was voted off. Um, and now, you know, Alex is trying to make her play, but he's pretty much dead set on Adriana. And I don't know that that's the best choice for him. So I'm ups not upset, but this, the fact that it, Alex and, and Rashid never are really going to get the opportunity to know each other on that level and take it to the next step, um, just disturbs me because I think they would be good together. Kalfani takes this opportunity. The homework is to meet to meet with somebody who you uh, need to get to know better. And he chooses Denise. And this is interesting because for a while, it seemed like him and Denise were really into each other. But then Adriana came into the picture and he even admits that Adriana is not his number one. So Denise really has some work to do to prove to him that she's the one. And they go out on a date together and they do this little cute thing where he gives her a massage and then they have some one-on-one -on -one time and they actually get to talk. He admits to her that his, his hesitation with her is that he believes her jealousy and her mistrust will become an issue as it relates to his, his work because he's a personal trainer. So, you know, I understand and it's very mature of him to kind of see this, I, see the writing on a wall and see that, you know, if he's going to be training women, he's going to be spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with women who in, in that kind of environment where it's intimate, everybody's kind of scantily clad. And, you know, we all hear these stories about how women start sleeping with their trainers and, and just how things transpire in that kind of environment. So it's a valid concern for any woman, but Denise is already shown evidence that she seems to be a little jealous or a little possessive and I like the fact that Kalfani sees this and he already realizes that there are some red flags. He brings it up to her and Denise says well you know I don't I won't disrespect you and that's really not the answer to the question and then she goes on to say well you know I still want some more massages and you can see the look on his face is that he he gets that she doesn't get it. Denise, and again, I'm trying to be objective here. And I don't like the way she's presented herself in the first half of the season. And I know that that may not be her. It could be nerves. It could be the way the procedure is presented. It could be production. It could be editing. But I think her behavior is going to lose her the man that she really wants. And while Adriana may not be the one for him, I think that's who he's going to choose. Because he's let Denise know how he feels and she hasn't really taken heed. And I think it's evident that she doesn't quite get what he's saying to her. Or maybe she doesn't get the gravity of what he's saying to her. Um, but I also believe that Denise is a person who is pretty much who she is. I don't know that there's a lot of opportunity for growth on a long-term basis. And I don't know that she can be anybody else than who she is on, for any extended period of time. So what he sees is what he's going to get. And in a lot of ways, that's good. And I think that Kalfani has shown that he's mature enough and aware enough to see that that's who she is and that if he does choose her, that that's what he's going to be signing up for. We see Edwin and Joy sit together and talk. I believe that Joy really likes him as a person, but I think she also observes that he has some issues that he needs to manage before he can get into a real long-term relationship. You know, he has this PTSD going on 
she has suggested to him that he knows he needs to go to therapy you know he's received it well but because of all of this i don't think that he's at a point where he's ready to be in a real relationship and she sees that winter and jay jay sets up a really nice date he sets up this um telescope and it's already positioned so that when she looks into it it's looking at the aquarius sign and she's an aquarius it's romantic it's thoughtful it's all that but Jay is not into her or not as into her as she is into him. It's very evident that Joy is the woman he wants to be with. Winter asks him how come they haven't kissed yet. His response in typical Jay fashion is, I'm going to give you what you want. But what he does is he leans in and he gives her a kiss on the cheek and she's visibly disappointed. She says in her confessional that he messed up and how could he not kiss her and you know all this kind of you know i'm i'm the bad I'm, I'm a bad bitch like how dare you not take the opportunity that i've given you but what i think would happen here is that she overestimated their chemistry she believed or wanted to believe that they were more into each other than they were and it's really because she's into him in that way i mean there are other men checking for for winter but I think Jay is her number one, but unfortunately Joy is his number one. And while it did seem, I can see why her feelings might be hurt because he didn't kiss her on the lips. I respect him for it. Um, I think he is doing some grown man-ish. You know, why play these games? Why, even in this environment, why lead somebody on if you already know where your heart is and you already know what you want then don't give this woman the impression otherwise and while it hurts her feelings in the meantime i think that's probably the best thing and that's what's going to garner you more respect in the long run because had he kissed her and tongued her down and all this other stuff and then chose joy at the end she would be in her confessional later saying, well, why did you give me all this energy and this rhythm if you weren't into me? So it kind of puts the man in a no-win situation. So I do like the fact that he kept it real. You know, he went on the date with her as per the homework assignment. But, you know, and also I think when she asked him how where his head was at, he told her that he had a really good connection with Joy. So I can't really, I can't, be mad at him you know he was honest with her and in his behavior also backed up his honesty now i think her ego was hurt and i understand as a woman especially you know a woman who's good looking who's probably used to getting a lot of attention you're not used to somebody telling you no or you being in a in a, a circumstance where it's obvious who is his number one but that's in a sense what you signed up for so she may not realize it now and maybe by the time of the reunion she will respect what he did but it was a grown man move and her in her confessional saying that he messed up by not kissing her was just her ego it's the end of the day so we see rashid meeting up with adriana after he's already gone his date on his date with alex and he buys her a gift because apparently she likes to write songs or sing or something like that so he buys her like a journal so that she can write her lyrics in there and it's a nice date and Rashid lets her know that she's his number one and then when he asks her the same question she dodges it he tells her that he tells her that she's his priority and she says something along the lines of you know I'm still figuring it out and when the time comes I'll know what to do again honest so I respect it but I think it was an eye-opening moment for Rashid when he realized that maybe I'm a little more into this than she is. Something she said that I found interesting when she says, you know, I'm a lot to deal with. You know, I've heard women say this before and I'm not sure if that's a, a warning to men saying, hey, you know, you can choose me, but let you just let you know that there's gonna be a lot that comes with this. Or if it's a self-deprecation thing, or if it's a let you down easy thing. I'm not quite sure what it means. I believe she likes Rashid, um, but I don't know why she said that. 
And I think that he really needs to take heed because like I said, he's a man of a certain age. He has a child. I don't know that he has the time to play around. And Adriana is at an age where she is playing around. She could be playing around and it's okay. And there's no, you can't really fault her for it. I mean, she's in her early thirties. I guess this is kind of what she's supposed to be doing. But a man in his early forties, late forties, I'm not sure how old our she is, doesn't really want that. So this is why I don't really like them for each other. And it's not that I don't think that they're compatible all of those things, I think they're just in different stages of their life. And I don't know that Adriana is going to have the patience and the wherewithal to settle down with a man who has such responsibilities. I think she's going to still want to pop bottles and go to lounges and go to day parties and all this stuff. And he'll be able to keep up for a while, but then it's going to get to a point where this is just not going to kind of mesh with his lifestyle or where he, the, the stage he has it the stage he is at in his life and that's going to cause problems between them um and there's something about adriana that makes me feel she's still a little superficial you know the fact that she seems to be so into calfani because of his body she keeps mentioning that just seems like she's still on that chase for the the perfect visual man and um yeah i don't know that that's gonna rashid is gonna be enough to sustain her Real quick, only because I find Edwin extremely boring, but Edwin and Joy have a date. And, you know, essentially it's just a kind of a I appreciate you date. I believe that the writing on a wall is that, you know, Joy is letting him know that I'm not going to choose you. And I think Edwin is acknowledging that you're not going to choose me. But I mean, I just want you to be happy because I think you're a great woman and whoever you end up with, you know, they're going to be lucky. But it was a nice conversation between two adults. You know, he acknowledges that he does need to go to physical therapy, excuse me. He does need to go to therapy and, you know, he appreciates the fact that she brought it up to him and he's going to do that. And so it was a nice kind of moment where I think they kind of both saw the writing on the wall like, hey, it's not going to happen between us, but I, I really appreciate you and you really appreciate me and, you know, we can go our separate ways with good feelings. So that was nice. So we get back into Tommy's tavern and he's talking to the guys because this is a week where a woman is being eliminated and he talks to, to them all and and he tries to pin them down and say, hey, listen, one and done. Who is your number one? Like, let's not play this. I like her and I like her. Who is the one for you? So Edwin chooses Joy. Jay chooses Joy. Rashid chooses Adriana. Kalfani chooses Adriana. Anthony tries to straddle the fence, but when he's put, his back is pushed against the wall, he chooses Winter. So that means that nobody has definitively chosen Denise or Alex. And by default, those are the two women who are going to be up for elimination, for lack of a better word. Because the end goal here is for them to choose three couples, right? So they're trying to dwindle it down. So we see Kalfani meets up with Alex. And we see that Anthony meets up with Denise. And I'm just curious to know, I do the woman or just do any of them know when they get called into like a private or a one-on-one -on -one with, with somebody from the opposite sex, do they know that this is like, that they're in the bottom two and this is elimination thing? Because it seems to me that the kind of conversations that they're having, it, it almost seems obvious to me that somebody's about to get eliminated. But I don't know if for the sake of, if for the sake of the show, do do they wrap it up where at the end of every episode that everybody pairs off and has a conversation and so they have no idea who is actually going to be eliminated or if once they are called into, you know, um, to a meeting with another castmate, they know that they are up for elimination. It's just something that makes me curious um, because the conversation between Calfani and Alex seemed very obvious. Because I've never really seen the two of them interact or have conversation. And he tells her, you know, I think you're great. And, you know, I would have had, I would have liked to have an opportunity to get to know you better. But, you know, you were, I, I deemed you Brian's girl. And she does, she says again that, you know, she she's disappointed in herself for um, 
limiting to limiting herself to him because she would have liked to have the opportunity to get to know other men and eventually that was her undoing because Rashid obviously had some interest in her Kalfani says that he was interested in her but because she was so into Brian she never explored these other relationships and Kalfani lets her know that you know they have come to an agreement that she's not ready to love she takes it graciously and she leaves now the other couple is Anthony and Denise and this is interesting because Anthony, Denise is one of Anthony's favorites and Anthony is Denise's number two because she's really into Calfani. And they have a conversation and um, this, I believe, is the third time that Denise has been up for elimination. And this is why I said what I said earlier. Does she even know that? Well, obviously she knows it now. But I wonder if she's kind of picking up what they're putting down in the sense that chick you keep being called to the carpet but um they have a conversation and anthony essentially just tells her you know i, I don't remember what the stuff that he said to her but the conclusion is that i want her i want you to stay because he's still on the fence if it's her or i want to say winter is another choice but let me say this about kalfani i was not a fan when the show first started i i i'm gonna be honest i thought he was like a meathead like you know the typical trainer big muscles just you know not really about anything but the more and more i watch him and the more i see his interactions and his conversations in tommy's tavern he seems to be mature grounded logical level-headed you know, I think the fact that he sees the red flags with Denise is evidence that, you know, he's not just this bubblehead who's just going for att for attention. Um, the conversation he had with Alex, the way he framed it and the, com the way he spoke to her, he just seems pretty level-headed. I, I think I like him. I mean, I'm not attracted to him, but I think that he seems like a good dude. And he seems pretty grounded. And um, that's different than the, the stereotype trainer that we see on these shows. So I'm actually becoming a Calfani fan. And um, But the challenge is, I don't want Denise for him because I think Denise is crazy. But I also don't know that I want Adriana for him because I think she's a little superficial and a little flighty. And that leaves him with nobody. So I wish maybe he had had a chance to get to know Alex better or to get some to know some of the other women better because I don't know that either of these women are the best choice for him. And knowing what I know about him now, I kind of want to see him land with somebody good. Um, you know... And another thing about this, I think we are at a stage now where I pretty much like all of them. You know, I think besides Denise, you know how I feel about her. But other than that, I think they're all pretty decent people. And they're all kind of looking for love and they seem to be genuine. Um, so this is where it gets difficult because I think they've gotten rid of all of the dead weight. And now we are looking at a group of mature um well-adjusted adults and i kind of want to see all of them win and it may may or may not happen but you know either and whether they meet somebody on the show or this just provides them a platform where they can meet people outside of the show you know I, it's a win-win but if we kind of stay in the confines of the episodes i you know it's going to be hard because like for example i really like rashid and i really like kalfani but they both really like Adriana and she can only pick one. And to be honest, I don't know that she's good for either of them. So it's those kind of situations, but it's good. And um, I'm looking forward to next week. And I did see a preview where it looks like some, there's some kind of bad news. Tommy pulls some of them in and um, I was trying to watch and see like who wasn't in the scene to figure out who there, who is the person who had this bad news. But I hope that it's something that is not um, life altering and maybe temporary and that the person will be able to come back into the game. Because like I said, and I keep saying, this is a really good season and um, I think they're really doing a great job with the characters and the, the tasks and the way they're just playing everything out week to week. Um, 
Also, I noticed that they said the next episode looks like it won't be until January 1st or something. So now I know that's only one week we're going to miss, but I'm really looking forward to this. And my Friday nights, I really look forward to watching the show. So I'm slightly disappointed that we won't have an episode next week, but that's fine. It just, you know, we got other things to be work worrying about. But um, so drop down in the comments. Do you have any predictions? Well, you know, who do you think Adriana is going to pick? Because she seems to have the ball in her court. And, um, you know, and who's going to be the next person to go? So we saw a woman leave. Who's the next man? My guess is it's going to be Edwin. But, you know, who knows? And um, that's pretty much it. So this is also the week before the holidays. So have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever holiday it is that you celebrate. And um, enjoy this time. This has been a rough year for all of us. So I really encourage everybody to spend time with their family and friends or, you know, whomever makes them happy and just kind of relax and enjoy yourself and get ready for 2021. So thank you for watching with me and we will be back in 20 in the, in the new year. We will be back in the new year to talk more about Ready to Love. Thanks.